I didn't know you attended my Angular Connector. Anyway, I'm really happy to be here. And this is my first time when I have a unicorn and a deer in the audience. Can you stand up, unicorn and a deer? This is the first time for me. And some unknown creature. Really happy to be here with you. Uh, I'm Uri. Um, I'm a Google developer expert, which means I go around the world speaking conferences, uh, write blog posts. You can find some of my uh, latest creations here. They are really fun. Um, I also play the pan flute. So a few years ago, I went to Peru and I got this pan flute. Let me play something real quick for you. It might connect to the theme of the conference. <laughs> Thank you. And last thing about me, I work for BlackBerry. Yes, they still exist. <laughs> and with that, to our talk subject today. So today we are going to speak about uh, one of my favorite uh, technologies. It's called Web Bluetooth. And we are not going to go deep into Web Bluetooth. Uh, I made a list of resources. You can see it on the back. Uh, so you won't have to take a lot of photos with uh, the links uh, during the talk. Um, and to make it easier for you, I put the link on Twitter. Um, and I am also uh, going to broadcast it using a technology called the physical web. So if you have an Android phone with Bluetooth on and location on, you may receive a notification now. You may see a notification with a link to this um, to these uh, IoT resources. Uh, and this is basically a blog post that uh, tells you about Web Bluetooth and uh, a nice talk where I explain all the internals. But today, we are going to see it in action. And before we do it, I want to tell you just a few words about Web Bluetooth. What is Web Bluetooth? Has anybody here experienced with Web Bluetooth? Just one hand. I like you already. Thank you. <laughs> So Web Bluetooth basically allows us to connect physical devices to our browser. So we can control anything around that that speaks Bluetooth low energy from the web page. We just did simple API. And the question I always get asked when I mention Web Bluetooth is, can I use it now? And the answer is, yes. It already works in Chrome and in Opera, on Android, on uh, Mac, on Linux with some kernel patches. Uh, Windows 10, I built a polyfill, so we are going to see it in action right now on Windows 10. Um, I hope that iOS will also adopt it soon. There is a third-party app that has Web Bluetooth. You can get it from the App Store, but it's not in any of the native browsers yet. And I hope that Firefox and Edge will also bring it uh, to the slate soon. But right now, we can already use it in Chrome in production, most of you. Before we continue, how many, uh, I do a lot of Angular. Are there any Angular developers in the audience? Very nice. So we are going to do the, a lot of live coding today. It's going to be Angular, but most of the code won't be Angular specific. So if you don't know Angular, that's fine. You will be able to follow through. I also have a few Angular stickers. So do catch me later if you want one. And now let's get down to business. So today we are going to use Web Bluetooth to connect a device that sits on your head and trans um, it reads the electrical voltage around your scalp in order to analyze brain activity and sends it down with Bluetooth. And we are going to connect to it from a web application. So this is the uh, device. It's called Muse. Uh, you can find the link on the list here that uh, I shared. And it's a really nice device, not super expensive. It's affordable. Um, and I'm going to connect to it from an Angular app that I created. Uh, I call it Muse EG Explorer. So uh, we'll just get a nice feeling of how it works before we dive into the code. Uh, let me click on Connect. And it should be on in a moment. I hope it will work well with this headset that I'm wearing now for the mic. I haven't tried it at home because I didn't have a mic. Let's see if it's already pairing with Windows. Please do. Please, please, please. That's always the most, uh, yeah, that's always the most uh, dangerous parts of live demos. And you can probably see some of my brainwaves already. Um, <laughs> as you can see, there is not too much activity going on in there. <laughs> 
And I want you to notice, I'm not sure if it's sitting correctly. I hope it does. Uh, yeah, it looks good. I want you to notice what happens when I blink my eyes. Ready? Did you notice the spike in the graph? Blink. Blink. <laughs> so yeah, so basically, a uh, quick tour of uh, what these graphs means. So you have four different graphs, TP9 and TP10. These are just the scientific names. For you, it's just uh, left ear and right ear. These are the electrodes that are next to my ear, my ears. And then AF7 and AF9, uh, AF8 are the electrodes on top of my eyes. So you can see whenever I touch my ear, you will see a distortion in the signal of TP9. And then whenever I blink, you can also see this uh, huge spike in the graph. And I won't go into the reasons for that, the electrical reasons for that. You can get it in my blog. But what we are going to do now, I mean, looking at graph is interesting for a few seconds, and then it starts to get, to get boring. I can already see somebody checking his phone. Um, <laughs> So what we are going to do, we are going to write code that will detect those uh, jumps in the graph and react to them. And what we are going to use for that is RxJS. Are there any RxJS users here? Cool. So we learned about promises which allow us to process one-time events um, such as uh, HTTP response arrived. So thank you, Neto, for introducing it to us, all those great tools. And now we are going to uh, see how RxJS allows us to deal with streams of data that keeps, keep coming in. And the stream of data we'll be using is the data from this EG headset. So I just started a new Angular app. Uh, before I got it, it's Angular 5. I'll also add the uh, Muse.js library. It's a small JavaScript library that hides all the Web Lotus interfaces from you, just giving you RxJS observable to the data coming from this headset. Uh, it's not too long, 150 lines of code. You can check it. it it's, it's in the links. And Yarn should be pretty fast. Yeah, it's ready. And let's start Webpack. This should also take about 30 seconds. Um, and what we are basically going to do next is to take this from scratch start Angular app and start making it, uh, connecting it with this headset and receiving and analyzing the data. Still waiting for Webpack. We all know this from our day job, right? Yeah, Webpack is great. Anyway, so the app has started. Let's. Uh, OK, welcome to app. That's the boilerplate that you get when you start a new Angular app. Um, and we are going to remove this boilerplate and replace it. So this is basically all the boilerplate code. Uh, let's add hi, JS Congress. And then uh, we'll add a button that will let us connect with the uh, headset. And click listener that will call the connect method on our controller. And up next would be to implement that method. So connect. Basically, what I'm going to do, I'm going to import um, the class that wraps the uh, Muse APIs. It's called uh, Muse Client from the uh, Muse.js NPM package that we just installed. We are going to create a new instance of it. So let's call it Muse. Muse equals new Muse Client. And then the first thing I want to do when somebody clicks the connect button is obviously connect. So I'm going to click uh, to write muse.connect. And as you can see, muse.connect returns a promise. We know that thanks to TypeScript that has all this type information. And we need to wait for that promise. So we are going to use the same trick that uh, Neto used in his talk. We are going to make a connect async and then await, which basically means that the next line will only be executed after this promise has been resolved. And once we are connected, we are going to start receiving data. This uh, sends the headset a command that uh, makes it record the data and send it down the Bluetooth link. And it also returns a promise, so we need to await for it as well. Um, at this point, we are very optimistic. We know that we are connected. Um, so we want to print connected and uh, like Alice Guta. I probably misspelled that, <laughs> but who cares? 
Um, and then finally, we are connected, the data is streaming, but we, need, we still need a way to get it. So we are going to use um, a property called EG readings, which is an observable. An observable is the basic building blocks of RxJx, and a basic operation we can do on it is just subscribe to it. So getting all the data that, data that is coming from the observable. So we say data, uh, and then we just console log it for now. Uh, so I'm going to save this, and we will um, open the console so we can probably see the connected, up updating, reloading. Let's disconnect this guy first so the other tab can connect to the Muse. I'm going to hit connect, and with the help of the God of Live demos, it will work. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the Web Lutus dialog, wants to pair with my headset, I'm pairing, and if everything works, we'll see connected, all is good, and then the stream of data in just a few seconds. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Uh, maybe, just maybe, I need to restart it sometimes. <laughs> sometimes this helps. Let's try again. Yeah, live demos are always dangerous. Will it connect? By the way, thank you for the interpreter. That helps us so much. Uh, another time. Now it will connect. I have a good feeling about it. Please don't disappoint us. I know you can do it, Windows. Yes, it worked. Thank you. So what I'm basically getting here is a lot of data. Uh, let me just copy paste one of those to VS Code so we can uh, look into it more easily. Um, so this is what the data, the incoming data look like. We have a timestamp, we have an array of samples, which is the important part. We also have a packet index, which is really not interesting for this demo. And we have the index of the electrode, um, which basically tells us whether it's the, if you remember from before, we have TP9, AF7, AF8, and TP8, so we can know which electrode sends this data. So every time we get a packet with uh, 12 readings from the electrode, and that's important because we will need to work with that with in just a second. So basically, our game plan for this um, app would be to take only the data coming from that electrode, which we have seen that it has spike whenever I blink, and pass this data, uh, just detect whenever it passes a certain threshold, and then do something. And we are going to do that by using RxJS observables, which are the, is the way we manipulate the incoming data, the incoming stream of data. Um, so the first thing we are going to do, we are going to filter by electrode. We only want the readings for this electrode, which is um, TP9. Um, I have a small helper here in this library that maps from the number of the name of the electrode uh, to um, the number. So I'm going to use channel names dot index of TP. Nine, and that will just include the index of this electrode. And now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to filter the incoming data so I only get uh, the electrode which is uh, go away, which is TP9. So I have the data I'm interested in, and now I want to um, find the peaks. So for that, I won't need to go over all the 12 samples that I get each time. I, would, I can just look at the maximum. So the next thing we are going to do is just to map each of those uh, 12 samples arrays that we get for each uh, incoming packet into just the maximum. We are going to use the map operator and it doesn't find map because I need to import it, so I'm going to do some magic and import a lot of stuff from RxJx. You can uh, <laughs> check it out later. Um, and now it finds map, and I'm basically going to say, I want just the samples, but I don't want all the samples. I just want the, the maximum of them. And you probably know math.max, it takes one, two, or many arguments and returns the maximum. It doesn't take an array. And data.samples is an array. So what we are going to do is to use a new operator in ES2000 whatever, uh, <laughs> called the spread operator, 
And this is equivalent to just write samples position 0, position 1, etc. It just spreads the elements of the array into different arguments. And finally, we have seen that sometimes uh, the spikes go down and sometimes they go up, and we just care about crossing the threshold, right? So instead of uh, getting positive and neg negative samples, we'll just uh, make sure everything is posit positive by uh, mapping it with math.apps. So we get an array of samples, we make sure everything is positive, get a maximum. So at this point, we are already having just the maximums from each of the readings normalized, so they are always positive. And the next thing we want to do is to detect if we uh, cross the threshold. For that, we are going to use another um, filter, and now it will be just a uh, sample. Uh, which is a number, and we say we only want samples with value greater than 100. I hope that this works. I don't know. Uh, we'll find out soon. So at this point, we will just get all the samples that have uh, numbers greater than 100. So we'll, if we had a graph, we'll also only get um, information. We'll also only get elements when we are at the peak of it or uh, at the bottom. Like uh, so. The next thing we want to do, we want to convert it. So this is like a stream of numbers. It's not really useful for visualizing, like for knowing whether I blink or not. So I want to convert it to a stream of true and false values. And I'm going to use a, a little trick, a little ArcGIS magic. Let me show you. It's called switch map, and we'll get into what it exactly does in a moment. But basically, what I want it to return is an observable of true. So whenever I get a new sample that is above the threshold, I want to return a new observable with a value true, a new stream with a value true. And then after 300 milliseconds, I want to return another value. I will use map for that, which is false. So basically, whenever I blink, I will return true. And then 300 milliseconds after that, I will go to false. Uh, we need to merge those two observables, so they will uh, switch maps uh, expects just one stream of observables, so we'll use observable to dot merge to merge this into a single observable. And I get no red uh, color, so I think I'm good. Um, <laughs> So basically, what switch map does, whenever it sees a new value incoming from here, from this filter, it just uh, calls this function. And instead of uh, returning this value, like the sample, we'll just get true. And 300 milliseconds after that, we'll get false. But then, if there is another value coming in, like 200 milliseconds after we got it true, switch map will actually cancel everything that uh, is still here which is the false that is waiting, and we'll restart it. So basically, whenever we get a new sample here, we return true, and then either we wait 300 milliseconds, and if we didn't get another value, we'll get this uh, false. Or if another value is coming, switch map will just cancel this timer, and we'll restart this. It will call the function, and we'll return a new observable with true and false after 300 milliseconds. So at this point, w instead of getting a stream of just numbers, samples, we'll get um, true whenever there is a spike in the graph. And as long as it continues to spike, we'll get a lot of true, 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 true. I'm not good at pronouncing true. And then. 300 milliseconds after we got silence, nothing happened, we get false. So we get pretty good ind indication of when we blink or not. And since I don't want to have a stream of many trues and then false, I just want it to be true and then false, I will use another nice uh, tool from ArcGIS, distinct until changed, which, despite a complicated name, just removes duplicated value. So if we have true, 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 it will just return the first one. So whenever I blink, the threshold crosses 100, I will get a true, and then at some point it stops uh, crossing 100. Uh, we won't get any more events after this filter, and 300 milliseconds after that, we'll get a false. And let's check that. Um, let's print blink. Data and connect. Will it work? Will it connect this time? Let's hope so. 
I need some dramatic music from somebody. Very dramatic music. Oh, again. Why are you doing so much trouble in the live demo, Muse? Why? Let's try to restart it and hope for the best. I think whenever it says Muse underscore, it's not good. It's some kind of problem. Um, are we ready to try again? Ready? I hope. Is there anybody here using a lot of Bluetooth? Yeah, it worked. Now I just need to, I probably set it very uh, sensitive, but I'll try to blink anyway. Blink, blink. So yeah, it sort of works, but yeah, but uh, we have to be developers in order to see those console logs. It's not really impressive, right? So the next thing we are going to do, we are going to, of course, visualize those blinks. And we are going to do it with a little Angular magic, now that we know that our code sort of works. Uh, it worked at home. Uh, we are going to create a new uh, member in our component, which will be observable of Booleans, because that's what we emit. And then we are going to assign all this, um, instead of subscribing to it, we are just going to assign all this goodness into uh, this dot blink. So basically, let's call it blinks. Uh, basically, the blinks observable will get true whenever I blink. And now I'm going to use some Angular magic to, instead of subscribing to it in the code, I will do it in my template. For that, I will create a new div. And inside this div, I will put an I emoji, of course. Uh, let's give it a class of I. Let's decorate it. Let's say that I, it's some really big number, real quick. One, two? OK, one, two EM. That will be big. Uh, and then I will say, whenever I blink, I want it to be uh, rot. Oh, it doesn't speak German? OK. <laughs> OK. And then uh, the next thing I want to do is do some Angular magic. I say, enable the blink class only when blinks is true. But blinks is an observable, so I'm going to use some uh, magic thing Angular has called the async pipe. This async pipe basically lets me subscribe to events from um, the observable, and whenever the value changes, it will just update the blink class according to the value, the last value received from the observable. So it makes working with observables in Angular templates real, real easy and sweet. So with that. Uh, let's go to our app. Let's hold fingers that it will connect this time. You know what? I also change the threshold to be a little bit higher, so maybe it will work more reliably. Don't know. We are doing it here for the first time. Let's hope it pairs with the Muse this time. Please do, please do, please do. Maybe a console will help. Yeah. Alles Gute! Can I blink now? Did I blink? Let me show you myself. Ready, set, blink. <laughs> oh, now you can see their visualization. Yeah, so basically, that was it. I should really learn the sign language. It looks really cool from here. Um, I wonder how we translated like all the code and the <laughs> you should tell me later. I would love to know that. Um, anyway, so uh, I think we had like, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sort of line of JavaScript code. And we managed to do something really useful with a device that is connected to the browser. Um, and I think that's amazing. Like, Web Bluetooth enables us, web developers, to start connecting to many kinds of devices around us. I have another one here, a light bulb. And if you want, you can catch me later. Perhaps we can upgrade this code so whenever I blink, it lights the light bulb. <laughs> can you imagine that? Uh, so that would be only a few more lines of code, I guess, as you can see. And what I want you to take away from here is, first of all, we live in an amazing time. We, as web developers, what was that? 
All right. We as web developers have the ability to connect with awesome devices, start doing our brain research, and I think this kind of device opens a lot of opportunities for you, uh, creating new interface for people, maybe with disabilities, or maybe new kind of games where you can just control them with your eye blinks. You know the offline game of uh, Chrome with the dinosaur? I made a version of it that you can control using blinks. You can come and play later if you want. I will use you as a background music for my game. So yeah, uh, thank you everybody, and I hope this inspired you to go home and create cool things. <laughs> music!